Lately, I've been dealing with some really bad nausea for the last couple weeks. I've even been woken up in the middle of the night like three or four times just from being so nauseous. And this really hasn't happened to me before. I've obviously been nauseous in the past, but not like to this chronic level. So I've been trying to eat a lot better. I don't know if something is up with my microbiome in my gut or whatever. Well, this is like a vegetable tagine. Tagine, I think that's how you say it. Um, that I made last night. It's an African dish with lots of vegetables and it's a stew that's supposed to be really good for you. I'm also trying to uh, increase my probiotic intake in hopes that that's gonna help mediate or regulate my microbiome and whatever's going on in there. That's causing the nausea, so I got kombucha. I actually love kombucha. I used to make it at home and it's really easy to make. Once you get started, you can make like literally gallons at a time for a fraction of the cost that kombucha costs at the store. So I might go back to making that at home. We'll see. So right now I'm about to go hike to a super pretty waterfall. It turns into quite the winter wonderland when it's snowy. And we got a bit of snow last week or over the last week. So I'm expecting it to look absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really stoked. I've been here before. Some of you guys might remember this spot. It's not the longest hike, it's not the hardest hike, but it's a really pretty one. And for those of you who are wondering what these are, these are called snow gaiters, and they basically help keep all of the snow out of your boots. Very important in the winter if you're gonna be hiking. While I'm hiking, I'm gonna leave a camera battery charging here in the camper with the help of the Anchor Solix C800 Plus, who happens to also be the sponsor of today's video. This is the all new Anchor Solix C800 Plus portable power station. It's the first ever power station to come with integrated camping lights, making this the perfect power station to bring on your next camping trip. More about the three mode camping lights in a minute. For now, let's just quickly go over some of the specs of the actual Anchor Solix C800 Plus. It has a standard output power of 1200 watts, which is plenty of power to run my dehumidifier, charge camera batteries, and watch TV in my camper all at the same time. It also comes with 600 watts of surge pad technology, which is perfect for those higher drawing appliances. It has a 768 watt hour capacity, which allows you to charge a standard iPhone 13 up to 49 times, or run a CPAP machine for 15 hours. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the truly unique thing about this power station is the fully integrated three mode camping lights. Underneath this nifty cover here, you have two camping lights and one retractable pole. The pole actually screws in right here and the light attaches right here at the top. So you have a portable light stand wherever you go. The lights themselves have three different modes, torch mode, floodlight mode, and candle mode. Another neat feature is that the lights are charged right inside of the storage compartment. Go ahead and click on the link in the description box down below to sign up for the C800 Plus presale and enjoy an exclusive $150 discount as well as a free anchor charger. All right, back to the video. So for this hike, I don't think that snowshoes will be necessary, but I am gonna put on these guys here, which are called micro spikes. And as you would imagine, they just help you um, gain traction when it's snowy and icy and slippery out. These are extremely, extremely handy when the conditions are less than ideal, but they're not bad enough to put snowshoes or actual like crampons. The best part is they just slip right over your boots like that and you're good to go.
winter is pretty much coming to an end here. Well, at least technically, I think the season transitions March 19th or so. And we're almost there, we're right around the corner. And I feel like I really didn't do nearly as much this winter as I had originally hoped. I didn't go on any snowy expeditions. I didn't do many winter adventures. That's not to say that there isn't still plenty of time to do snowy activities and whatnot, because there is plenty of snow in a lot of places still, this being one of them. But as far as like winter adventures, didn't do as many this year as I wanted to. And uh, that's just kind of how it goes, you know? But we're out here now and that's what matters. I am kind of in the middle of planning out a couple bigger road trips to close out the winter season. So stay tuned for those. Those are gonna be quite exciting. Until then, we're just gonna be here in the Pacific Northwest, enjoying the rest of winter while we can. I've said it before on this channel, but I'll say it again. There's something truly captivating about rivers in a snowy landscape. There's just something so tranquil and so satisfying and so just amazing. Gets me every time. <laughs> Wow, check it out. It's actually kind of frozen over here. I don't think I've seen that on this creek before. It's now so fluffy and powdery and wet. That reminds me, I bet you all the snowboarding and skiing right now is so good. This just means I'm gonna have to go hit the slope soon. wedding in this thing. Oh, it might look really cold because of all the snow, but it's quite mod mild out. I tell you guys is this an epic spot or what not to mention the fact that I'm literally the only person here right now which is quite incredible because this is this is a sight to see especially in the winter time and it also randomly starts snowing pretty good so probably start heading back to the truck soon but it's hard to beat this it's hard to beat this I think it's time we be on our way here. I know it said it wasn't cold earlier, but I think that's just because I was going uphill. But it's quite chilly now. Hence, the snow coming down. Definitely, by far, one of my favorite spots in all of Oregon. Prime. Prime, that's all I gotta say.
So the snow that's coming down right now is extremely wet and heavy. It's almost falling like raindrops, but it's <laughs> almost took my eye out there. Wow, it's really starting to come down pretty good right about now. I honestly uh, wasn't anticipating this, but you never know up here in the mountains. Could happen at any time. Woo! All right, let's go have a snack. Getting really hungry. Apparently I got back at just the right time because it is absolutely dumping outside right now. My camera is just completely foggy and wet because it just got covered in snow in that short period of time we were standing outside. And uh, now it's just, it is, this is the hardest I've seen it snowing in a long time. Late season storm, that's what this is. I was at the farmer's market the other day and I picked up a fresh baguette, some delicious Sopracetta salami or is salami the same thing? I think salami is a different type of sausage and so is sopracetta. I picked up a nice roll of sopracetta and it is delicious. You guys might've heard of the company Olympia Provisions. They're up here in the Pacific Northwest and they make some really, really good cured meats. And I also got some local Irish cheddar also harvested right here in Oregon. And you just cut a little piece of the baguette here the baguette is hard as rock now because it's been a few days and I didn't really have it stored properly. So you got your bread there. Got a little bit of the cheese. And here is that beautiful sopracetta. Absolutely delicious. Cut a nice chunk there and just slap that Now it's nothing revolutionary. This is a classic combination, but there's something about farmer's market, fresh ingredients that when assembled together like this, so good. It's, it's definitely a little bit more pricey than you would spend at the grocery store, but totally worth it. Mm. Even though the bread is a little bit stale and crunchy, if anything, I think it kind of, kind of just adds to it, honestly. If you guys ever see Olympia provisions at the supermarket or wherever, because they do distribute, they do distribute around the country. I would highly recommend their stuff is so good. It's so tasty. There's so much flavor in the Sopracetta. Even though I didn't put that much, that flavor really just cuts through everything else and mm, so good. As tempting as it is to stay up here in the snow again, I think I'm gonna switch things up and head down the mountain and go find a spot to camp somewhere. Somewhere hopefully along the river or near the river. I don't know, I have no idea where I'm gonna camp actually, but I do know that I do wanna switch things up. And it also stopped snowing, so I would be pretty bummed if I stayed up here because I thought there was gonna be a heavy snowfall and then there wasn't and then it was just kind of a waste. So I digress, let's go find our camp spot for the night. This area around here is called the Fruit Loop because there's all kinds of apple orchards and strawberry fields and they just grow a lot of fruit, hence the name Fruit Loop. And there's actually a lot of wineries as well and vineyards. And when it's better weather out, there's a few vineyards that just have really pretty spots to hang out, grab food, have a glass of wine, have cider. Um, and it's just, it turns so gorgeous out here in the summer, in the spring, when it's, when it's warmer basically, when it's not raining. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. 
They raised the price. It used to be three bucks, now it's three fifty. Everything's going up. Sheesh, this is a freaking narrow bridge. What the hell? How do big rigs come across this thing? Wow, that was a freaking narrow bridge, man. The jacks on this camper kind of stick out a little bit too. And I just was waiting to clip either a car in the other lane or the side of the bridge. Cause I was like, there was like no room. I don't, if big rigs drive on that bridge, I, I'm pretty impressed. Cause that seemed like close quarters for me. We're now in a town called White Salmon. It's right across the Columbia River from Hood River. It's in Washington and there's actually a really cool river called the White Salmon River that you guys might have seen me white water raft down the river last season. Cool little town over here. It's a really cool little town right along the river. The Columbia River is right over there. I want to see if there's potentially a camping spot down here. I feel like the last time I was down here I remember seeing some people who looked like they could be camping. But I could be mistaken because it's been quite a while. Well, that looks like a dead end. But at least I could pull over and see if I could find anywhere on my camping app. A lot of you guys actually ask how I find most of my camping spots and sometimes it's just driving around in areas where I know that there's dispersed camping allowed, like public lands. Um, and then other times, a lot of the time I use this app called iOverlander. It's a really good app. It's hit or miss. The spots typically work out. Um, sometimes they don't. But for the most part, I have quite a bit of luck. And at the very least, sometimes the specific spot that's listed on the app doesn't work out, but then at least you're in an area where you could find other spots. Or even if the spot's there and you just don't like it, there's a good chance that you could just drive around some of these areas and find other spots. All right, a slight change in the plan here. The spot that I was about to head to didn't didn't look that great and I looked at the app a little bit more and I found a really cool looking spot back over in Hood River so I'm gonna have to pay another 350 to, to get back over so seven bucks down the drain but you know what it is what it is just driving along this random forest road here and over there we got a cherry farm quite the large cherry farm Surprise, surprise, yet another gated forest road. Closed for the winter. That's a bummer. That's a total bummer. Wasted all that diesel driving up here just to find out that the forest road is closed. Ah, oh, God, come on. And now it's probably going to be dark by the time I get to my camp spot. God, this thing is not the easiest rig to turn around if you could imagine especially on the forest roads here in the Pacific Northwest somebody commented on one of my videos recently saying uh, you guys in in Oregon always have all your forest roads closed off with gates and you're not wrong this is like the 20th time I've run into another closed gate Maybe I should go camp with them. They look like nice neighbors. All right, well, this is it. This is home for the night. Pretty cool spot here. There's a really nice overlook right over here. I'll go check out in just a moment here. 
And uh, it's a little bit loud, the highway's down there, but I think I should be good tonight. Quite the pretty view out here, that's for sure. This almost seems more like a spot that I would stay at if I was like on a road trip and this was just like a spot that I found somewhere along the way. It's not really a camp spot, but it's definitely making me want to get back on the road. There's just something about being on the open road and staying at spots like this regularly. Oh shoot. When you have no specific camping destinations in mind, soon. I will be on the road soon. Like I mentioned earlier, I do have some trips that I'm in the middle of planning that I know are gonna be really fun. So can't wait for those. A little bit of a bumpy row we were on earlier. <laughs> Tons of stuff came bouncing out of the cabinets, I guess. I don't know if any of you noticed, but I actually just swapped in a new faucet. The one that I replaced was the original one that came with the camper. It was really old, really outdated. So I figured that it could use a bit of a refresh. Um, this one matches all of the handles that I installed on the cabinets a while back. Got these beautiful farm fresh eggs also at that farmer's market that I was talking about earlier. Oh, quite the brittle shell on that one. Kind of using the cheddar cheese as if it were a cotija. Or a queso fresco. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot the avocado. That would have been a shame. It's funny, when I cook this meal at home, it seems like a quick, easy, simple meal. But here in the camper, it seems a little bit more involved. But I think it's going to be worth it because this looks delicious. It's always worth it. Well, usually. If only it were that easy, right? 33 outside, 65 in here. Oh, 64, it just dropped. If you guys missed it in my recent video, I installed a Frawley sleep system underneath the mattress. It's a, it's a mattress underlayment that helps to reduce moisture buildup under the mattress, but it also makes this bed super, super comfortable. It's like sleeping on a cloud. This is, this is dangerous. Something tells me it might be a little bit hard to get up in the morning. Well, see you guys tomorrow. Good night. I slept in way, way later than I normally would. <laughs> I usually wake up at 7, but man. Ugh, I wasn't kidding when I said this mattress is way too comfortable now.
Normally this is right about where I would end the video, but while we're out here, I still have one more thing to show you guys and it's pretty cool, so I think you're gonna like it. So where the heck are we, you might be wondering. Well, my friends, I'm currently at the Bonneville Hatchery, but this isn't just any ordinary fish hatchery, because this is the home of an absolute legend here in Oregon. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute here. All right, guys, here we are. This is the main attraction that I've been hyping up. Hopefully, the legend himself is visible. Oh my goodness. There he is, guys. Look at that absolute tank of a fish. Can't really see his head, unfortunately. But that is a big old sturgeon. So this, guys, this is the world famous, well, maybe not world famous, famous here in Oregon. His name is Herman the Sturgeon, and he is a local legend. He is huge, as you could see, I don't know, maybe, maybe 10 feet long or so, which actually isn't the largest that sturgeon get, but this particular fellow here, local legend has it that he has been, he's had a very crazy life. Apparently, he's been kidnapped, he's been stabbed, survived a fire, all kinds of different folklore, if you will. I'm not sure if it's real or not, but he has a really exciting story, and this is really cool to get to show him to you guys, because I've visited this spot many, many times. It's very cool. Every time, I'm shocked at just the sheer size. I don't know if you guys could really tell in the footage, but this guy is massive. He's gotta be at least 10 feet. And then there's a bunch of other Bunch of other sturgeons swimming around in there as well, but you could probably tell none of them compare to the legend. As you can see, according to this info chart here, the first sturgeon appeared 200 million years ago. 200 million years, that's absolutely insane. These fish are basically giant prehistoric dinosaurs. It's wild, so cool. I know the glare is making it hard to see probably, but there he is, an upwards angle of Herman the Sturgeon. I've actually never been here while they were doing this before, but all this piping here is coming from those trailers, and there's all kinds of little fish filling in to the pods over there. Pretty neat to see it actually in progress or the process of them actually filling the pods. Because I've never seen it before. All right guys, well, that just about concludes it. I hope that you enjoyed this little detour. I know that I enjoy stopping by at this hatchery every time I'm in the area. So I'm glad I finally got to share it with you guys. That's gonna do it for this one. Thank you guys. Like always for watching, if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you'd like to watch more videos, you don't have to. Hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Um, I appreciate all of you. Catch you in the next one.